we just had a really long conversation and a really long panel looking at the way women are portrayed in film. And over the last two to three years, I think the nuance and complexity that are being brought to strong female narrative is so exciting, so interesting, genuine, um, flawed, vulnerable. And so I'm finding it really exciting to see the breadth of work coming out of particularly TV and miniseries over the last few years. Obviously something's not right. I can't find a job. Have you ever tried an internship? Tina. In 2009, uh, one of my friends who um, jumped off um, the pedestrian bridge outside Heathrow Airport, well, basically, she, you know, she takes her own life. Our friends were in shock because we didn't know why. And, and I think it's after that, I feel there's a need I need to explain to find out what happened to her. When I start to discover, I find out that she actually worked in, um, as, as an illegal masseuse in an um, uh, illegal massage parlor. Uh, my character, Anna, um, obviously goes to a very dark place in the film. That pressure of making ends meet is very identifiable to lots of people um, living in this country and all around the world. There's a huge increase recently in women written and women directed stories that have women and <coughs> protagonists and that's exciting to me because I think that'll continue to develop as we move forward. It's become much more popular and trendy to have that so I, I think that will only continue to increase but in mainstream media and more traditional uh, conventional kind of hand-me-down roles of women I, I find it to be you know pretty poor. Okay. When you're in my class from now on, you are known as Lucy. No more sets cook. Lucy. I think I can just do my thing and hopefully that can inspire people maybe, but uh, it's it's so hard to change anything. So I think you can only care, care about like what you can do rather than try to change the system. <laughs> Then it's like really like a losing battle, I think, when you try. But as long as I, I keep trying what I need to do, what I want to do. There aren't any, many um, Japanese, I mean, female filmmakers in Japan, but it's, it's always in in UK or US. Be, because my family is very supportive, that's why I can do what, I, what I'm doing, I feel. So I, I feel very lucky. I think uh, I can't talk, speak for someone else. Let it go. I think it's changed dramatically, but I, I, think, I think I feel that because of the press coverage. Then when I look back at um, the actual, like the films that I was watching when I was in high school and things like that, I mean, there's still, Catherine Bigelow was still a big director. She was making Point Break. Um, there, were, there were female directors kind of making interesting films. There's a lot of, I think, focus on kind of trying to shift the, uh, you know, or at least fill the gender gap. I think we have a lot more appetite for exploring the difference between the masculine and the feminine for a slower paced film. Something more about questions of belonging or being your best self, like being authentic and how to bring that into the world, separate from what everybody else expects out of you. Um, and, and things like what makes life meaningful. You know, it's, it's a, it, there's a real difference between a story, like a hero story, a masculine story about set a goal and get her done. These are much more your internal journey and they're so much more interesting to me. Tengo el marido, ahí está en el asilo. Ya no trabaja, pero ahí lo tengo enfrente. Ahí lo estoy mirando todo el día como postre. I wanted to answer who are we when we start forgetting. And I had this uh, hypothesis in my mind that people who start forgetting, they would surely hold on to that last memory that really defines them and that goes into the core of who they were. Through our struggle to become part of this world that is normally dominated by men, we have encountered and created a space where we, we are allowed to feel whether men sometimes are not allowed to cry or not allowed to fail or not allowed to experiment or they have to be perfect all the time. And I think women, we, we were very wise in creating that space for ourselves where it's all right to cry, it's all right to feel, it's all right to change, it's all right to fight. I was born in 1947, given the name Penelope Del Slinger. 
In 2012, four and a half years ago, uh, I stumbled into the Rifle Maker Gallery in London Soho and I first saw Penny's art. I didn't know what I was looking at, but I knew it was intriguing. I got talking to the curator there. Maybe I could make a film about her at some, in some way, because it seems like there's an interesting story here. Um, at that point, it, I thought it might be a 10 minute piece. It might be longer. I started pulling at the thread of the story and I discovered this huge secret history, this extraordinary body of work. Um, you have to consider when Penny was doing this work back in the counterculture in London, Rolling Stone predicted that she would be as big as Sergeant Pepper one day. So I wanted to know why we hadn't heard of her. She was very much ahead of her time. Penny's work has the guts to stand up for itself. In terms of the industry, say, American indie film, for example, will be a lot more engaged with female stories than, say, Hollywood blockbusters. If you want to know what Hollywood blockbusters think about uh, women, have a look at all the superhero posters of women with their backs to us, looking over their shoulder. I mean, it's, it is obviously flesh that's been sold and it, it goes that deep. Um, so I think things are improving. I think with film festivals, there are more opportunities for more stories to be told. But at, a, at an industry level, it, the, the, the stats are shocking. I think there's this, there's this weird thing where women are in, in a lot of movies are really motivated by finding a man or getting married, settling down. Um, they might have a really exciting life at the start of the movie and at the end of the movie they sort of don't because they've found love or something. And it's just not how anybody that I know lives. Also, um, most of the time the dialogue between two women in any movie um, is completely unbelievable. They'll sit around just talking about men, but actually when I sit around with my friends we talk about our careers, we make dirty jokes, we talk about politics, none of those things get reflected in what I see on screen.